Hi there, I'm Drudder. Today's day 35? Yeah, 35 of my lockdown diary. Sorry the days are starting to blend into each other, and I'm sure they are for you, too. Before I started, I want to mention that I want to send out my condolences to the family members and victims of the mass murder in eastern Canada. I believe there were 10 people, maybe more, killed there today. Uh, over the past 24 hours. I don't really have the details of it myself. I just basically seen the headlines, but I want to mention that uh, my condolences go out to them. Now, one in four CNN anchors, approximately, has had the coronavirus. I think maybe it's more than that at CNN. It's, it's almost all of them now. And a lot of A-list actors have had coronavirus. And a lot of world leaders, including my prime minister and his wife, and other celebrities have had or currently have the coronavirus. It's very, very popular, very, very common amongst people who are in the spotlight. But in the general population, there's only about one in 4,000 people that have this diagnosis. So why do public figures get infected a thousand times more often than everybody else? And speaking of CNN, yesterday's big headline read, Recovered coronavirus patients are testing positive again. Can you get reinfected? I've digested, translated, cut out the BS, removed all the fluff, and so forth from this article. Here's my summary. According to South Korea, 163 people, or about 2% of those who have recovered from coronavirus there, have since had a positive test. That raises the question, can you get reinfected? Scientists tried to incubate the virus from these patient samples, but weren't able to. There was no live virus present. The most likely explanation is the tests are so sensitive they pick up remnants of the dead viral RNA. Even though some complain of mild symptoms, there's no indication that they're contagious. Korea has found no danger of further transmission, but will continue to investigate. China's top respiratory experts have the same theory, saying a recovered person can test positive because of fragments of the disease that remain. When a person is recovering from a virus, their body produces antibodies to remember how to fight it, preventing them from being reinfected. The USA says it might be possible for a person who has recovered to be infectious due to the possibility of outliers without antibodies. It comes down to this. We don't know much about COVID-19. And if all you read was the headline and then skimmed to the bottom, as a lot of people do with these mainstream media articles, you're left believing it is possible to get reinfected, when hidden within the article is the truth that this appears impossible. So if there's little or no possibility of reinfection, why put out a front page article titled, Is it possible to get reinfected? with a question mark, when the answer in the article is no. Not just that, but to then obscure the answer to the question to all but the most discerning and skeptical readers. I think it comes down to fear, basically. They want people to be afraid, and they want people to think it's permanent. A permanent fear, a permanent threat. More permanent than perpetual war and 9-11 and all those scary things and then terrorists and everything. This is permanent. This is threatening you every day, every time you look at someone, every time you move around, every time you go to buy something, you are going to get sick, right? And not only that, but if you get it, you might be able to get better if you're lucky, but you'll still get it again. You'll be able to get it again and again and again, and everyone's going to be, it's all permanent. That's what they're saying. They're justifying all the permanent changes to society by saying that this is permanent. But when you read the article, it says actually, no, once you've had it, that's it. You can't get it again. So speaking of that, the mouthpiece of the would-be controllers of the universe announced a completely new world order today, April 19th, 2020. Apparently, experts say it's time to close all stores for good. It's time, apparently, to move everything online, all online orders, online payments, and front porch delivery, or maybe drive through in some locations, but no more in-person purchasing of goods and services in this society. <laughs> the reasons they give, one is, we need more social distancing and more isolation to flatten the curve and to keep this threat down of the virus and the pandemic. 
But is that really what it's about? As I said yesterday, it's becoming less about the virus and more about controlling people. They say it's about social distancing and isolation. So we have to shut all the stores and keep people away from each other that way. But it is not really about that, is it? It's not. It's not really about the virus. The virus is a real threat, a moderate threat, as I've said. But the real threat is that they want to control people, not the virus. This is all about controlling people. And the other reason they gave is that there's a risk to staff from careless customers who get too close and spread the illness. Should we ban all jobs where danger or risk is included? Because there are a lot of jobs where danger or risk is part of the job. And can you end a 5,000 year human tradition, the purchase of goods in person, because of a viral outbreak that is hopefully temporary, likely man-made, and definitely already in decline? Talking about changing everything about the economy Daily life? Society? Wow. And there's no mention of cashiers in this article. They just say employees, store staff. They don't mention cashiers, but half of all store employees are cashiers. And most of them are going to be out of work because of this. And I'm not in favor of making work to keep people busy if we don't need them. That's not my slant at all. But just think if you're going to put half of all store employees out of business, out of work, right now. How many people work at a store? <laughs> How many people work at shops or stores or small businesses that have cashiers? Half of their employees are cashiers. Half of those people that work at stores in the world, apparently, are going to be out of work. That's purposely not mentioned here. Right? They're just selling, they're trying to sell the idea, we've got to get this cashless society, we've got to get this storeless society. We've got to get people away from each other, right? That's all it's about on the surface. That's all they're saying it's about. But what they're not mentioning is cashiers. What they're not also mentioning is self-checkout options. We don't need cashiers. In a lot of cases, we don't. We've had self-checkouts for years. They work really well. And people complain about it because you're getting rid of cashiers' jobs. <laughs> That's ridiculous. But we could be using either cashiers or self-checkouts still. We could be but we're going to get rid of them all. We're going to get rid of them all. We're going to close all stores, and we're going to be delivering this stuff. We're going to be doing it online and paying online with digital currencies and then getting delivered to our house or picking it up at a drive through location, perhaps. Wow. All in a very short time has this all been announced and is being rolled out. And they're just saying it's experts say. Experts say. And bureaucrats have already started to put uh, this into play, they say. This is already, be, already being put into effect. Wow, just, just instantly. No consultation. It's just, that's what has to happen, right? That's what has to happen. We're in a state of emergency. Anything can happen right now. I said that. Well, there we go. That's what happened. We just got rid of all stores. And it's not just grocery stores, it's all shops, all shopping, right? They're only talking about grocery here, because that's what affects most people, and most people think about when they think about shopping. But it's all shopping. We can't have any more in-person purchase of goods anymore. They're changing that. No more in-person purchase. No more cash accepted. How can you pay with cash online? You can't. It's digital currency online. Digital currency only from now on. They're getting rid of the fiat currency that we have. <laughs> the failed fiat currency system. They're not going back to something that makes sense. They're going further into that system. They're going to a hyper fiat currency, a, an only digital fiat currency from now on. And no privacy. This is a technocratic dream come true. It's coming to fruition right now. And it's a total tracking of all goods, all currency, and all participants in the, quote, economy, which isn't ours. It isn't a free market economy. It's their economy. It's an owned economy now. What about ordering fees? Of course there's going to be ordering fees. Maybe built in, they might say, you know, free delivery or something, but there's all that delivery, the ordering and the delivery and all those charges. Someone has to pay for this, right? Someone has to make this happen. They're doing the shopping for you. You're not shopping for yourself anymore. Trust me, you're going to be paying for that. There's no one else that's paying for things. It's the customer always that's paying. There's nothing free. They'll tell you it's free. Free pizza delivery, right? It's free. <laughs> it's built into the cost. You know that. You have to pay for everything. That's, that's this kind of world. That's this kind of world. You want to breathe? You pay. You want to drink water? You pay for water. That's this kind of world. That's what we're coming to. Everything is going to be 
monetized. Everything is going to be tracked. Micropayments. Everything is going to be paid for and owned. But not by you and me. By the state. The state is going to own everything. They're already nationalizing the food supply. They've said that. They're taking control of that. But what about people that don't have internet? Is there some of those people? Some people have chosen not to have internet. Or some people just don't for various reasons. Or they can't. They don't know how, right? The elderly, people, you know, that just can't grasp it. There's people that can't, okay? That's un going to be unfortunate for them, I guess. All those people are just left out of this new economy or they're going to have to be some kind of way to bring them in, a bridge, someone that helps them interface with this new economy. That's a loss of efficiency big time. What about people that don't have an address to ship to? Lots of people that have a home, even, don't have an address that they can receive packages to, let alone people that are homeless. This is... Uh, what? That doesn't make any sense that people have to have a home. Or a car, because maybe you can have drive-through ordering. What about people without a car? I'm not allowed to drive. My wife and I have a disability. We can't drive. We're not allowed. What about us? They say just go through the drive-through. Same thing with, with um, fast food. We wanted some fries last week. We were thinking about, you know, I'm craving some fries. We don't want it very often, but every so often a nice hot order of fries. Yeah, we can't. There's nowhere we can get that. Because we can't get it delivered because we can't pay online. And we don't have a car to pick it up. They don't have ordering at the window anymore. You can't go into the restaurant anymore. There's no more restaurants. No more in ordering in, only drive through which we can't do. So we, we tried. We tried many different ways. It's gonna, we're going to have to pay someone or a taxi or a delivery company or something to go and order and that and pick it up. And it's going to be $20 just for an order of fries. So it's not doable. So that's, you know, that's just, that's just a little anecdote. But there's all kinds of things like that. Major things that actually impact people's lives happening like that right now because of this. And I haven't even managed to grasp all of it. I haven't wrapped my head around this. It's just been announced today. I'm, you know, this is just what I've thought about so far. What about you know, decreased quality of life for all those people. Don't have either internet or don't have an address or don't have um, a, a smartphone, don't have a drive through ordering, all these things that people may opt out of or may not be able to get for various reasons. The quality of life for them is going down. They have to work around it. They have to find a way to get food into their mouths still that's going to cost them more. It's going to be, it's going to be not going to be as efficient and it's going to be more expensive for them and harder, more, more work to get food basically, more having to walk further or having to, to uh, take more time, stand in more lines, you know, all this kind of stuff. It's people's lives are being degraded. This is a quality of life drop that's been happening for a couple of decades now in the Western world. And it's been kind of hidden, but it is happening. And now this is another major, major drop in the quality of life for most people. The rich will get out of this without any quality of life loss, but um, the average person is taking a major hit here. And, you know, these people are going to have to accept help from governments and charities and so forth just to survive, putting them basically into servitude for the system, right? And what about produce? How do they know how ripe or how long I want my bananas, right? My grandma would always send me to the store. She would say, get them as green as you can and as long as you can, <laughs> right? How do they know how long and how ripe I want my bananas? And can they select the perfect avocado? Because I can, about nine times out of ten. But I don't think I'm going to get the perfect avocado very often anymore. Just a suspicion. And you can't inspect items anymore before, before buying them. Maybe they'll have it on the website where you can like, you know, look at the ingredients. They'll have like a, a picture where you can zoom in on the ingredients and stuff and still find out what's in there and everything. But you can't look at the packaging and you know, see if it's in good shape. You can't see if the can is dented. That kind of thing. The produce. You can't see it. Whatever. You can't see the... Maybe you don't, can't see the expiry date. I don't know. It's, it's going to be not a very efficient system. This is a mess, right? And this is their solution to <laughs> a virus that is a moderate threat that could be managed a different way, right? We're already getting it under control with the measures that we've taken, and we can start backing off on those, as I've said. But instead, here we are. They're announcing a cashless society, a storeless society, no returns. They've already done. That's already happened. There's no returns. You can't return anything anymore. If something's no good. That's, so sorry. You buy it. You keep it. That's the new new policy around the world. Apparently, 
I don't know if it's happened where you are, but pretty soon there won't be any returns. So if you had anything you were thinking about returning and you were holding the receipt and the item, maybe just get that back real quick because they're getting rid of the whole concept of returns. And there won't be any malls, obviously, so there's a lot of large buildings and malls and stuff that are going to have to be completely changed what's going on there. I guess there'll be warehouses, I don't know. But no more malls, no stores, no shops, no kiosks, no farmer's markets, no roadside stands, no lemonade stands, that's for damn sure. I think they already got rid of that one a few years ago, you damn kids trying to make money on the side of the road. No thrift shops, right? What about those cute used bookstores and things? What about antiques online? That kind of thing. That's that's a little harder to do, like inspecting an antique on a picture. Uh, depending on the antique, I don't know. Um, I don't think that's going to work out for a lot of people. And no garage sales or yard sales or anything like that. Cause, hey, that's cash also. And hey, you're in person too. That's, that's in person sales. Can't do that. No barter. No trade. Negotiation online. It's kind of not the same. Um, a lot of things are changing. Nothing that brings humans together to transact in the things they need to live or to pursue liberty and happiness. That, that's going the way of the dodo. That's gone now. We're entering into a de facto cashless society without saying it's a cashless society because people are triggered by that phrase. We've been watching for that. We don't want a cashless society. That's why they changed what martial law is called. People don't want martial law, but they're okay with the Emergencies Act, which is the new name for martial law. They don't, people don't look at the details, they're okay with different names. Names apparently are where it's at. Now, CNN says it will have to be phased in. This isn't going to happen, obviously, overnight. And as we've seen with the mad rush to online groceries recently, this industry apparently can only expand so quickly. Apparently, Amazon and all these companies are ordering and bringing in all kinds of new equipment, bringing in new employees like mad right now. And their infrastructure and their employees are increasing dramatically right now. And But that's as fast as they can increase, apparently, these big companies and these online delivery services and things. So in some areas, real stores may be open for months or maybe even years in some cases. So you may be able to transact in person. I don't know if it'll be with cash, but you may be able to purchase items in person for a short time in some places. But experts, apparently, and officials, apparently, have already decided that this is what's happening and that this has begun being put into effect now. Now, enter the ABC bill announced today also. Very simple, innocuous sounding bill, as many of these broad sweeping social engineering bills are. It was introduced by Democrat Socialist Rashida Tlaib, I think your name is pronounced. It digitizes the US dollar. There you go, folks. Digital US dollar. The US dollar is going <laughs> even more fiat than it ever was before to a completely non-physical form. 100%. They're phasing out cash, notes, and coins. They'll still be in use in some places for some time. It will need to be phased out. Um, <laughs> there's just no other way to do it. There's a lot of US cash out there but it is going away. And remember, this is not a crypto. People will call it that. It's not a cryptocurrency. It's a digital currency. There's no privacy. It's centralized. And it's completely manipulated by the Fed. That's how it's set up, just like the US dollar. So it's not a crypto in any way. It's a virtual currency. It's more like video game gold than anything else. In fact, it is. It's, it's video game gold under a different name, US dollar, digital US dollar, or Canadian tire dollars. It's the same kind of thing. It has no physical form anymore. Canadian tires at least had some paper form. They're getting rid of that now even too and going just to like an electronic chip or whatever, a card or an app even for Canadian tire dollars. So there's not even a physical form for that. This is a completely virtual currency. It has none of the advantages of a cryptocurrency. So anyone who calls it that, you must remind them it's not a crypto. It's a digital currency. Specifically, it's a virtual currency, one of the most worthless and unbacked type of currencies that's possible. And it's the farthest from real money that we've ever experimented with in society. This is a new modern monetary theory idea, this virtual currency. And it's far worse than any fiat currency has ever been. 
far worse than any fiat currency ever. So, <laughs> and along with this bill, hey, $2,000 free for everybody. Well, digital US dollars, of course, per month. Not just the one time 1200 that you got recently, you guys down in the States. No, 2000 US dollars in digital form every month for a year for everybody, even newborn babies and people, you know, in, on their deathbeds. Everybody's getting it. Everybody who can draw breath, including undocumented foreigners that are in the country. So that, that's going to be a lot of people and a lot of money. And then after a year, they say they're going to taper it down, or maybe after the end of the crisis, it will taper down. But <laughs> will it? <laughs> it's not really temporary. Of course it's not. No, of course it isn't. They've wanted to do universal basic income for a long time, and that is absolutely going to be permanent, obviously. It's servitude, right? They're making serfs out of everybody, which is just a way of saying that you work. You must work, or at least you must obey, in order to get food. No one really has much of a way of getting ahead. It's kind of like a socialist idea. No one has a way of getting ahead. Someone, you know, the owner owns the land. You don't really own anything. They're getting rid of kind of the idea of private ownership of anything. We're just getting paid to exist, stay at home, and help collect and dump milk, maybe. You can get into the dairy industry and help dump milk out into fields. Whatever or just stay at home. But basically everyone's going to get free money because who needs food, right? <laughs> How to pay for all this? Well, there's two ways. One they didn't announce, but I'll tell you what it is. It's negative interest rates. It's coming because I've already gone to zero and they've said they needed to go further than zero. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense, but they're going to. And the other, you know, the reason I know this is because they don't want people to have savings right now. They don't want people to have savings. They're going to give people this money. It's not cash. It's digital. And then they're going to say you have to spend it. Because if you keep it in the bank, we're going to give you negative interest rates. So to avoid that, people, they don't want that. People want to take their cash out of the bank if they think interest rates are going to zero. Or if interest rates do go to zero. People take their, their cash out and they hold it in cash. But if, they're not, if there's not, not allowed to be cash, if there's no cash in the system, you're not allowed it which is what this whole bill is about, then you can't do that. You can't do it. So no one wants to, you know, to pay money to have currency in the bank. So you take it out, but you're not allowed to take out cash because there is no cash. So that's why we know that negative interest rates are coming. And that's how they're going to pay for this. They're going to make people pay for anything that they have in savings. They don't want any savings. And the second way they're going to pay for this, it's a joke. But it's real. Trillion dollar fiat coins. Just They just print, basically not a note, but a coin, about $100 worth of platinum or something. And that's the, you know, that's, so it's not truly a fiat note printed off of thin air. It has some backing. But it's a trillion dollar coin with about $100 metal in it. So it's fake prosperity. Nothing is created. Apparently they're going to make two of them. So $2 trillion from thin air, again. It's just financial trickery to anyone who understands currency, money, and the difference between the two, and value. There's no value being created. None. It's the same as the 2008-9 TARP and the other straight robbery from the people. It's just hyperinflation. And they've declared gold non-essential, so that, that's not going to be a savior for the people. Gold and silver bullion. I still advocate for owning it, but... You can't get it right now. You can't buy, you can't sell it very easily right now. So these two coins that are made of platinum, it's less valuable than gold. They could have used gold. Why use an inferior, less valuable metal? It's, is that symbolic? You know what they should be? They should be $100 coins for circulation. They should mint thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of these coins and put them into circulation. $100 face value on each one. Make them a $100 melt value or maybe $80 melt value to account for production costs and so on. But then we would have a non-fiat system again and they don't want that. They want to go the other way. Other, other way from fiat, instead of going back to a sound money, a sound currency, they want to go hyper-fiat. They want to go to a virtual currency. So, $1 trillion coins? That's debt slavery is all it is. 
It's a hyperinflationary collapse. It's the death of the dollar. It's the restructuring of society and a new world order. It's the technocratic vision from three generations ago finally coming into place. This exact bill, the ABC, may not pass, or might get changed before being passed, but it does show the plan. And they did talk about digitizing the dollar a couple of weeks ago in a different bill that didn't quite pass, right? That is the plan. Digital dollar, universal basic income, cashless society, everything tracked, total control and power to the state. That is the technocratic vision. And that is now almost completely in play. It's hard to overstate the threat to tyranny this represents. <laughs> it really is. But that is where we are. That is what was announced today. And as for possible solutions, my line in the sand has already been crossed. I don't know about yours. Everyone must make their own decisions about what they will allow and what they will do in their lives, what they will acquiesce to. But I won't purchase my daily bread with anything other than private physical currency or money. No one is going to track all the nutrients that are coming into my home, right? No one is going to track all purchases, all sales, all transactions, all interactions that I and everyone else does in this society. That's not the world that I'm going to live in. So, these are human problems, but human problems have human solutions. So, it feels like too hard to do, deal with. A lot of people say, I can't do it. I'm just one man. I'm just one person. I can't change the world. What's me changing things going to do anything? That is where you're wrong. That is where they've got you. We can change the entire world by changing ourselves, by changing our buying habits, by changing our eating habits, by changing our daily activities, by changing the way we think. The whole world will change. If all the people within it change, the world itself changes because it's made up of us. But for us to say, oh, we can't do anything. It's just going, we're just going along with this. That is why it's happening. It's because people are going along with it. I have a line in the sand, and this crosses it. Will you join me in standing against a cashless society? Stay awake, stay aware, and stay well. And lastly, 15 second garden update. Garlic looks great. Starting some basil in here. A couple of different kinds of tomatoes. Sweet 100 and Amish paste, and some squash. Rhubarb, yuck. Raspberries, yeah. And alongside my shed, I've put in a row of snow peas. Putting my growing skills to good work during this economic collapse. Talk to you guys soon. Stay well.